Hey everyone, let's just get this out of the way. Super exciting news and announcement. I'm engaged. I know, I know what you're thinking. I know. But I'm making this video today to kind of walk you through how miraculous my life has been over the past four months, five months. I know I mentioned it so many times already about this whole metaphor I'm using about a current, like this stream, you know, flowing one way and I'm trying to go the opposite way, but it's so much more intense than you even know. And I just want to tell you about it for the purpose of showing you how even amid something horrible, heartbreaking, devastating, and difficult that God was by my side and he was leading me and helping me. And he had a plan that I could have never imagined. So I want to tell you guys the story. One day I'll bring my fiance, Mark, on here to tell kind of his side of the story and a little bit about like our proposal and whatnot. But for now, I just want to talk to you from my perspective, my point of view, how miraculous this whole thing has been. So let's jump into it. I really like to do reminiscing. I reminisce a lot on the past and how things happened. So I was kind of going down memory lane. It's so funny because just yesterday I was talking to Mark, my fiance, about just how miraculous this whole thing is, how crazy things have been, how insane that like things are just so right and so meant to be. And I was just doing a lot of reflection. And the reason why this got brought up was because of a song. So when... I was going through my faith transition and I was just kind of becoming a Christian and leaving Mormonism. And then, you know, CJ left and now I'm alone, like completely alone. I put my kids to bed at eight o'clock and I, I what, what am I going to do? Like, I was grateful in some ways that I got to just like clean and have time to myself and do what I wanted to do. But I'm not the type of person who even likes to be alone. There was nothing I really wanted to do by myself. Like, what am I going to do? Sit there and like pluck my eyebrows? Like, I don't know. So I really clung to like reading the Bible and listening to Christian music. And I found Justin Bieber's album, Freedom, which is literally like a secret Christian album that he has. When you go to his albums on Spotify, like it's not there. You have to search for it. And there's a song called Where Do I Fit In? And Tori Kelly's on it. It's so freaking good. And this song I used to listen to every single night, almost all day long, every day. Cause it was like practically the only thing that brought me comfort. You guys, I took paper and I wrote mantras on it and I pinned papers to my walls to remind me of, you know, this isn't my fault and that I'm still good and that God has a plan. Like I was trying so hard to like comfort myself and remind myself of things. Cause I mean, it's just absolutely devastating as you can imagine. Like my husband up and telling me he's never been committed to me and that he can't be with me because he can't be faithful to me and like he doesn't even want to work on it he just wants to leave me like now I'm just alone like everything that I thought my future would look like is gone and there was so much I had to mourn and so much confusion and like oh it was just horrible so I would sit here in bed basically crying my eyes out every night and I would just listen to this song on repeat so it says when the day is over and those thoughts set in that's when I start to wonder, where do I fit in? Then you remind me that you're holding me tight. You say the past is behind me and it'll be all right. And you say to me, it'll be all right. When I'm all alone and fear is all I see, sitting in the silence with these insecurities, it's then you remind me you're holding me tight and you love me completely and you're always by my side. And you say to me, it'll be all right. I know you're not a God out there hiding on mountains. Oh no, you come right where I am. Lost my way, but you found me. Like the rain in the dark on my ugliest days, you say that you'll always love me just the same. And then you remind me that you're holding me tight. You say the past is behind me and it'll be all right. I hear the words over and over. It'll be all right. Go to sleep, my child. It'll be all right. Sleep soundly, my child. It'll be all right. I'm right here, my child. It'll be all right. I won't go anywhere. It'll be all right. You're in the palm of my hand. It'll be all right. My arms are wrapped around you. It'll be all right. While you sleep, I watch over you. It'll be all right. I'll take care of your loved ones. It'll be all right. Your future's in my hands. It'll be all right. Your past is forgiven. It'll be all right. Your future is secure. It'll be all right. I forgive you. It'll be all right. I'm your friend that's closer than a brother. It'll be all right. Sleep now for when the morning comes, my mercies will be new. It'll be all right. And I would sit there and listen to that song and I would question like, I know God is with me, right? He's so clearly been guiding me to like, 
Christianity and to Jesus and out of Mormonism. I know he loves me. I know he's by my side, but how is it going to be all right? I know God's not hiding. It's so clear that he's by my side, but how is this going to be all right? How am I going to be all right? He's telling me like, go to sleep. It'll be all right. I'm like, I can't fall asleep. I'm alone. My husband's gone. My life is turned upside down. Like, how am I supposed to fall asleep? I literally would stay awake as long as possible. I'd stay up as late as possible so I didn't have to just sit there and think, you're in the palm of my hand. It'll be all right. Really? Are you sure I'm in your hand, God? Because I don't know what the heck you're doing with me. I don't know where you're taking me or what you're trying to show me. I'll take care of your loved ones. That was the biggest thing for me because one, I was worried about CJ because I loved CJ and I was sad for him, sad for my kids, sad for this family that I had. Like, what does this mean? But he says it'll be all right and he'll take care of them. My future is in his hands. My future is secure. What does that future look like? How is he molding my future? How is my future going to be good? But I just had to cling to this and believe that it was true. I just listened to this, told myself it was true. And there's um, a video I put on my Instagram stories. That's so crazy for me to look back on. I'll show you right here. Now my Instagram is private, so not everyone can see. Man, this was 20 weeks ago that I was posting this stuff. 20 weeks ago that I was going through these things, suffering so much inside and nobody knew. Nobody knew what was going on. I just wanted to say to you guys, I know you probably think it's so stupid. Why would you come on stories when you're crying? But I just, I just want anyone else to know who's struggling that like, I'm going to be okay and you're going to be okay. It feels like everything in my life is falling apart. My religion, my marriage, my family. But I know that it will somehow be okay. That there's a reason why this is all happening at the same time. Literally, the exact same time. There's a reason for it. I don't know what it is yet. I don't know what God is doing in my life and what his plan is for me but I know it's got to be something good for me to go through this crazy transformation it's hard for me to watch I mean my kids were just a mess crying every night like our life was a mess I would go on dates with guys and I would come back miserable I just didn't want this to be my life I didn't want this to be happening I was heartbroken at what CJ was doing, watching him going on dates and meeting girls. And it was, it was, it was horrible. And then I met Mark. And in one day, I felt something I hadn't felt in six years. I felt so drawn to this man. And it's not because he was super attractive. Like none of the other guys I had been talking to or whatever were attractive. Like I can't explain to you what happened when like I saw this picture of Mark. And I'm not going to go into the story of like how we met, like I said, but I felt something so strong and we met that same night and I felt something so strong and so comfortable. So that was on a Friday that we met. And then I went to church on Sunday and thus far, every time I had gone to my non-denominational Christian church, every Sunday, it was about suffering and heartache and trials and challenges and everything that I was experiencing. I would sit at church and I would just cry and be alone and I would just sit there with my arms folded and listen to the songs and just, I was so sad. And the pastors would come up to me and they would give me a hug and they would say, we're really happy that you're here. We're really proud of you for coming. And I would just feel horrible. And then two days after I met Mark, I went to church and that Sunday was completely different. Everything was about God keeping his promises and God answering our prayers and God changing our lives and new life and blessings. It was completely different. And there was this song. And when this song played, I started crying because I knew as much as this song is a worship song and it's about God, it was God showing me and giving me a sign that this song was about Mark. So I'm going to read you the lyrics of this song. And again, I just have to point out that I'm a super musical person. Like music was my life. I always clung to music, whether it was performing music or listening to music. And here God is communicating to me through music time and time again. So here are the lyrics to this worship song. Oh, the wonder of your love leaves me speechless, undone. 
of the mystery of your grace that it covers my mistakes. In awe of you, I'm in awe of you. I've never known a love like this, so beautiful. I'll never get used to this. My heart is yours. Of this I am convinced from now until the end. I'll never know a love like this, so beautiful. When I think of what you've done, every sin you've overcome, that you would do it all again, I will never comprehend. In awe of you, I'm in awe of you. You don't leave me where you found me. Pull me up out of the mess. You don't leave me brokenhearted. Never break your promises. You keep giving second chances far above what I deserve. You keep telling me I'm worth it, not a love I have to earn. I've never known a love like this, so beautiful. I'll never get used to this. My heart is yours. Of this I am convinced from now until the end. I'll never know a love like this. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. So when I heard that song, I'm just thinking like, I've been waiting for God to keep his promises as far as my marriage with CJ. But God never promised that that would work out because we have agency, right? We have free will and CJ made his choices. But what God did promise me is that he will not forsake me and he will not abandon me and that I am in the palm of his hands. And that he loves me. And he's shown me that. He's blessing me. He's guiding me. He's putting things in my life. He's allowing things to happen that have changed my life. Like for the rest of my life, put me on a different trajectory. He won't leave me brokenhearted. He's going to pull me out of the mess. He's going to keep giving me second chances, even when I don't deserve it. He's going to forgive me of my sins. His grace is going to cover me. Everything he's done for me. Everything he's overcome. And he does it for me. He tells me I'm worth it and that this is not a love I have to earn. And I immediately, after only knowing Mark for two, three days, I knew that that's how Mark treated me. And that's how Mark felt about me. That I didn't have to earn his love. That I didn't have to change my hair color, my eye color, my body, or what I ate, or what I believed for him. I knew that it was a love so beautiful. And a love like I'd never known. I knew that, you guys, on day three. And I told him that day that I went to church and had this really amazing experience and that I heard this song and I showed him that song and he was like, I love it. Like, I completely agree. Like, we just knew, we knew that God had brought us together. And there have been so many times over the course of our relationship, which has only been, you know, a few months, not very long, that we kept trying to make plans. We kept trying to do our will and God showed us something completely different. I remember so clearly we were talking about building a house because we knew we were going to get married, but I wanted to wait a year. So we were like, this is perfect. Let's look into building a house. And by the time we find a house, by the time the house is finished being built, it'll be a year from now. And then we can get married. Like you can move into that house. We'll get married and then I'll move in with the kids. And it'll be, you know, sometime like next fall or something. We were totally on that train. We were on board to wait a year. And we both just felt so overwhelmingly that we're meant to be a family as soon as possible. And that's why it was so crazy when Mark proposed because it wasn't when he was planning on proposing. But once again, like God knew better. And when Mark proposed to me, he, he said all this. Like, I know we've tried to make plans. I know we've had goals and timelines, but God's plan is better. and We can't fight the current. And it's so freaking miraculous, you guys. It's so crazy how much I felt like my life was over. Like my life was ruined. Like I didn't know how long I'd be single. I didn't know if I'd ever find anyone who would love me the way I needed. After everything I'd been through, like all the freaking trauma and PTSD that I have, trust issues that I have, issues with pornography and addiction and infidelity. It was terrifying. And I'm sure you guys again will think I'm crazy because how could I really trust Mark? I have no way to explain it other than God's involved in this. And God has made it so clear that we are supposed to be together. Every time I tried to slow down, every time I tried to like fight and resist how fast things are moving with Mark, every time I tried to go back to CJ, go back to safety, God comforted me and showed me that I was supposed to be with Mark. I'll tell you another little tidbit of our story. Really early on when we were dating, We knew that we loved each other, but I still felt so much love for CJ and I did not want to abandon him. CJ still felt like my, my family and my home. And I just couldn't shake how much I wanted to be with CJ and be with the kids and be with, with what felt comfortable and and natural and what I was used to. I told Mark 
that I didn't want to be unfair to him. And I needed a week. I need a whole week of like not talking to him and not worrying about like his feelings and just figuring out what I, what I needed to do here, what I should do. And I couldn't even make it a day. You guys, I spent the whole day not talking to Mark. And I said to myself, I can live without Mark. He's so new to my life. I can get used to being without him again, but I can't be without CJ. I can't live without CJ, but I can live without Mark. I need to fight for CJ. And within a couple hours, I immediately knew that that was not true. I tried to go to bed that night without saying goodnight to Mark, without talking to him, and I couldn't. And not only did I know that I couldn't be without Mark, but I knew that he couldn't be without me. That was a game changer for me because I realized that there is a man here who deserves to be fought for. And it's not the person who I was trying to fight for. No offense to CJ, but there were things like that where I would think this thought or I would have this fear, this word, this insecurity, and God would just shut it down and show me what I was supposed to do and show me how good Mark is and that I can trust him and that he is the real deal. Now he is a man who loves me and treats me the way I deserve and who will continue to do that, who will fight to the death for me and respect me and adore me. It's crazy, you guys. It's so crazy. So here I am reflecting on all of this, on the immense heartache and pain and sadness and confusion and fear that I had and how it got turned around so fast. And it didn't seem like it was fast because for... Me and Mark, it was really hard. There was so much for us to work through. And he was patient and stood by my side and fought for me. It was so hard for me to fully close that chapter on CJ and to truly give in to what God was showing me was meant for me. And so when I look back on it, I'm just, I'm in awe. Like that song says, I'm in awe of you. And you guys, when I went to church yesterday, they, they did that same song that they did when I first met Mark. And it was just a reminder of, again, like I am in awe of what God does for us. And his hand in my life, how he doesn't abandon me and how the things that I clung to from that other song when I was just destroyed, that my future is secure. I'm in the palm of his hands. He'll take care of me and my loved ones. It's like, it's all proven to be true. I'm just so grateful and so happy because you don't know how crazy this is for me. Because I've never had anything like this. I've never known a love so beautiful. Like I said, one day Mark will be on here and he'll share his side of the story too. Talk about how miraculous our, our meeting is and our love. And it's so crazy. But so good. And we know God is behind it all. And as much as the world will disagree with us and criticize us, it is the most miraculous divine thing for us. So that is my story. That is my exciting news. And for those of you who support us and are here for us, who've been there by my side, who've seen what I've been through over six years, I know many of you have been able to tell that there's something so different about me and about my relationship with Mark. And I just really appreciate you guys being there for me and standing by my side. And there are so many of you who knew that things weren't good before. And you never put me down. You never told me what to do. And I'm grateful for, for that too, because I had to figure this out on my own. You know, God was involved in all this and it happened the way it did for a reason. So thank you so much for your love and support and your, your happiness for us. And I can't wait to get married and to have babies and to have the family that I've always wanted. It's so good. The kids love him so much. He's such a good dad to them. I can't even believe the life that I have, you guys. So thank you so much for your love and support. I'll see you next time. Bye.